So you want to stick your Sonoff behind the light switch. Makes sense, there's a little bit of room behind there and the Sonoff can easily fit in there. But uh, if you're lucky enough to have a neutral behind there, you can put it there. But in this case, there's no neutral. Um, so what do you do now? Well, no neutral, no problem. I've got a solution for it. Now, if you don't have a neutral behind the light switch, it's possible that your lighting circuit is wired similar to this, whereby it's all wired in conduit and the live and neutral come from the consumer unit, the fuse board, and uh, the live travels down the conduit to the light switch and then the switch live travels back up the conduit going straight to the light bulb in the light fixture. And uh, the neutral travels straight through from the consumer unit all the way down to the light bulb directly. So there's no neutral going to the light switch. Now in an ideal world, you want the Sonoff behind the light switch where it gets its live and neutral connection uh, to power it. Uh, it gets the two connections from the switch on S1 and S2 to trigger the Sonoff and the outputs then uh, of the Sonoff go directly to the light fixture where the light bulb is. Now since this is not an option for us, it would be quite handy if we can put the Sonoff Mini by the light fixture directly right next to the light bulb so we just chop into the light bulb's wires and connect it in between. Now the Sonoff will have its precious neutral it needs to operate and it's connected to the light bulb um, but it has no switch line con connections to it so the switch can't control it and it has no permanent live feed it just has a switch live feed which means if the switch is turned off the Sonoff will be turned off and you lose Wi-Fi control so this is not ideal either. However, I think we can do a bit of magic here with a little circuit I've designed. And this might just solve our problem. Now if we connect a diode across the light switch, uh, if the light switch is in the open position, we still have half-wave DC making its way through to power the sun off. And if the light switch is closed, it gets full wave AC going to the Sonoff. So it would be powered either way. Um, in the light switch being in the off position, it just gets half wave DC. Now the Sonoff Mini doesn't mind, it powers just fine on half wave DC. Its little internal rectifier um, is a half wave rectifier anyway, so it doesn't mind half wave DC to power it. Now the magic comes with our little optocoupler circuit which can detect the full wave. So the moment the switch is closed, um, it will detect the full wave AC and uh, the, the light emitting diode inside the optocoupler turns on, turns the phototransistor on. It uh, links out S1 and S2 and that's our virtual uh, switch line contacts by the Sonoff locally. Um, it will simply ignore, uh, when the light switch is open, the optocoupler circuit will ignore the half wave DC. Now this little optocoupler circuit is incredibly simple. It consists of a very common optocoupler, which is essentially an LED and a phototransistor in one, and there's no electrical connection between them. And what you've got is you've got um, a current limiting resistor, which drops the voltage down, and um, you have a rectifier diode, which only allows one half of the AC waveform to pass through. And you have a, uh, a filter capacitor which smooths the ripple out uh, to a certain extent. Um, and because of the way um, the, uh, the diode inside the light switch is in the opposite polarity, um, it won't work if the switch is in one position. It will only uh, detect the opposite uh, half of the waveforms. So essentially once it's in full waveform. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's just a, a resistor, a rectifying diode, and a capacitor. And when the mains is connected in full wave, the LED lights up, phototransistor turns on, and that's it, really. Now, in order to make a practical circuit, instead of using one resistor, I use three of them connected in series, which spreads the heat dissipation and also the voltage rating of quarter watt um, resistors aren't suitable for just to use one, but if you put three in series, it's fine, it, it spreads the voltage rating. Uh, the capacitor to smooth it out is a 470 microfarad capacitor, and the voltage rating doesn't have to be for mains voltage because it's limited by the forward voltage of the LED. 
It's a 1N4007 rectifier diode. And our optocoupler is a very common uh, variety optocoupler used in uh, switch mode power supplies. They're dirt cheap to buy. It's the PC817. Now the circuit is incredibly simple. I've just kind of put uh, the optocoupler on a bit of prototyping board in the center and uh, based the other components around it. And I've given it a bit of spacing uh, between the high and low voltage sides to space the components out around the optocoupler. So there's plenty of clearance between the high voltage and the low voltage uh, side of the circuit. So there's good isolation there. Um, this could probably be done with surface mount components as well to make it incredibly small. Maybe possibly small enough to fit inside the Sonoff Mini itself. But uh, if you make it small enough, you can uh, wrap it in a bit of uh, heat shrink sleeving to give it better isolation. So let's connect it all up and lay it all out and power it up and do a practical demonstration of how it might work. So um, if, if you have house wiring that's in conduit, in all likelihood you have um, just your live going straight to the light switch and then becoming a switch live and it runs straight to the light bulb and the neutral just runs straight across all in conduit to the light bulb. Uh, sometimes if you're lucky there's a neutral behind the light switch but um, very often there's no neutral behind the light switch and that's a problem if you want to put your little son off behind the light switch. But uh, I have this little hack where um, I have this little board here um, which allows you to put the son off by, um, by the light fitting itself and it can be powered by the switch live um, and it gets its neutral from the light bulbs neutral and um, uh, how it actually works is when the switch is in the off position there is a diode uh, behind the light switch and the diode links across the switch so if the switch is in the off position it still passes uh, half wave AC or sorry half wave DC to power the sonoff and the sonoff can power on half wave because internally it has a half wave rectifier so it doesn't make any difference it works just fine then what what happens is um, you can then control it with uh, Google Home or whatever um, but um, how it gets its uh, switch contacts obviously is uh, that's a little bit more tricky because obviously they're they're over here so this little board um, when it sees full wave um, the optocoupler then the transistor bridges out the switch contacts here so it's like a virtual switch lines going to there so this detects the full wave so the moment uh, you uh, close the switch um, now you don't get half wave powering uh, the sonoff anymore but full wave this detects that it's now full wave and uh, links the two switch contacts out for the sonoff mini and uh, it creates a virtual um, switch lines at the Sonoff Mini. So even though you have uh, the light switch that would normally just cut the power to the light bulb, you actually have a permanent feed. It's, it's now half wave instead of full wave, but there's always power here at the Sonoff. So the Sonoff can stay powered. And our little board here just detects whether it's half wave or full wave. And as soon as it's full wave, it will, uh, it will switch, uh, switch these, link these two out. And um, that means our switch still works. And we can control it via uh, Google Home. I'll, we can test that. Okay, Google. Turn on the outside lights. Okay, turning the outside lights on. And of course, we can manually override it with our switch. Yeah, so this little board here gives us a, a very handy solution. It means we can effectively just cut into uh, our light fixtures wires and just put it in between. And it means our Sonoff Mini can go straight into the light fitting. Now there's one thing you need to be aware of. Your LED light bulb needs to be able to tolerate half-wave DC. So the way you would test this is you would take a diode on the live side and put it in series so that you could uh, test your bulb to see if it can tolerate half-wave DC. It turns out a lot of LED light bulbs work just fine on half-wave DC. Now we can test this. I've made a little test rig um, which is just a, a socket and a um, diode 
uh, connected um, in series with the drive. We'll plug that in. Now if we screw the light bulb in, if it didn't like halfway of DC it simply wouldn't work or come on very dim and flickery. As you can see there's no flicker whatsoever. The reason this can work on half wave is because the AC comes in, gets rectified to DC and is smoothed through a, a filter capacitor. So whether it's um, uh, full wave AC coming in or half wave DC, it just smooths it to the, to the peak voltage and uh, it works just fine. Um, now, if you try a different um, LED bulb, um, this one does not like half wave at all and it comes on after a while but very dim and flickery. Some of them don't work at all. This particular type of LED light bulb I think is a capacitive dropper type and the DC doesn't pass through the capacitor. So uh, you have to test your light bulb first. Luckily most, most LED light bulbs seem to work just fine but you do need to test it first. That's the only little caveat or problem with this, uh, this approach. Well, I can now demonstrate to you how exactly um, this little board works. The components are dirt cheap. It, it would cost probably less than a euro or a pound to make this, uh, this little device. So it would be quite handy if we could uh, put our Sonoff Mini um, inside the light fitting. Um, so if we open it up. So, um, be handy if uh, if we could simply take the feed from the bulb and uh, make that the supply to the Sonoff and the output of the Sonoff to the bulb and then just use some double sided tape and that's the Sonoff here somewhere. So that would be a nice and simple way to mount the Sonoff inside the light fitting if you can't put it beyond the light switch because you have no neutral because we have a neutral at the light obviously the only problem with this is now um, there is no way for the light switch to control the sonoff and if the light switch on the wall is turned off the sonoff isn't powered so we need to find a way to get power to the sonoff and for the light switch to control the sonoff and that's where my clever little hack is going to come in Okay, so now um, I've attached my little optocoupler, which detects half wave, sorry, which detects the switch by when the diode gets bridged out on the light switch. And uh, with a bit of double sided tape, you can now just attach it somewhere inside the light fitting. And a little board that does the switch detection can be stuck with double sided tape on top of the Sonoff. And now we have a means for the Sonoff to see the light switch when it's switched from half wave to full wave signal. And the Sonoff can still be powered either by half wave or full wave. And that is our trigger for the little optocoupler to send the signal to the Sonoff. So let's give it a test. Okay, Google, turn on the outside lights. All right, turning on the outside lights. Okay, Google, turn off the outside lights. Got it. Turning off the outside lights. Right, so now let's test with the light switch on the wall. So the light switch on the wall still turns the light on and off by bridging out that diode. And our little optocoupler detects the half wave or the full wave signal, which then lies to the sun off and tells it it's the light switch to it. Light switch turns it off as well. So that's great, so it works just fine. That's it for this video, guys. Let me know your thoughts um, on this uh, Sonoff hack. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And um, hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Okay, Google, turn off the lights.